Hey everyone and welcome to another painting video. In today's tutorial I make a self-portrait with watercolors and color pencils. As a reference I chose a photo that I found pretty enough to turn into an artwork and I printed it out in the size that I wanted my painting to be. Then I used tracing paper and I traced it onto my watercolor paper. By the way you will find all materials that I used to create this artwork including the tracing paper in the video description. I use yellow artist tape to tape down my watercolor paper onto a piece of wood so that it is stable and I can carry it around when I need it. This also helps with the warping of the paper, which is a familiar problem that every watercolor artist knows probably. It doesn't prevent the paper completely from warping, so if I want to have it flat, I just put it between two books or I also use the iron sometimes and after that put it between books or heavy weights to flatten the paper for a couple of days. And that does the job most of the times. I started with giving the face and the neck portion a light skin tone and then while the paper was still wet I directly added the colors of the midtones and the shadow in the wet areas so that they could bleed out and create some of the gradients that I wanted to render from the reference photo. Because when the watercolor dries it fades relatively strongly. I need to use a lot of layers in order to get to the desired depth and darkness that I see in my reference photo. In the beginning the watercolor will look very dark and intense but the moment it dries probably 50% of the intensity will fade and so I have to use a lot of layers to get to the desired effect. After some of these mid-tones had dried, I continued with the eye makeup. I mixed a dark brown tone and filled in the eyeliner and the eyeshadow. To make the eyeshadow blur into the skin, I first put down a area of my brown color and then I use a wet brush and go along the edges so that the color can bleed out a little bit into these wet areas. However, this will never be perfect, especially not on the Fabriano paper that I use. This is a little bit challenging, so I just used this stage to give my color pencil drawing a underlying layer where almost all colors are already there and then I just have to refine areas like the eyeshadow or the nose. I try to do as much as I can with watercolors, but for all the perfections I switch to color pencils later on in the process. You will see. The same technique that I applied for the eyeshadow I used at the eyebrows as well. Here again the blendings are not perfect and I will use my color pencils later on to smooth them out. Then I continued with the reds on the cheeks and I also tried to make this area on the right side of the face where there is a red area and then on the tip of the cheek there is a lighter area like a highlight and my goal was to make a blending between the light highlight and the red of the cheek. It didn't go perfectly well because the watercolor dried so fast that I couldn't make a blending but I really like these accidental effects with watercolors and I just let them where they happen and I don't mind them at all. Then I continued with adding another layer of color on the portrait area. Here I chose green and red tones like I could see them on my reference picture and whenever I see some of these colors in any reference pictures I try to exaggerate them so that my painting looks more vivid and lively. After I had done that I filled in the lips with a very intense and dark red tone. After that I filled in the white of the eyes with a light blue tint and continued with the irises and the pupils. The white of the eye is never white so it's always some kind of blue or grey or sometimes even yellow. After that I added more layers of skin tone to the face and step by step I came closer to the reference photo and to the color values. So even though everything looks still very messy, the color values are almost like the reference photo and everything comes together. Whenever I add new layers of skin tones on a previous layer, 
I have to be careful to blend them in as best as I can and properly so that I don't paint a dark layer on a area where I should have a highlight instead. So I have to be careful all the time. And the more layers I add on the Fabriano paper, the more difficult it gets to make smooth blendings. So here again, I don't mind at all if I get some rough watercolor edges. This is totally okay and gives the painting a charming character in my opinion. Next, I continued with the teeth that you can see between the lips. This area is especially delicate because it's very easy to mess the teeth area up very quickly. You can make them too dark or too light or accidentally make a dark tooth. So I have to be very careful when I paint these tiny details. And for that, I bought me a detail brush. It makes a huge difference to have good watercolor brushes for details and for large areas. For intermediate areas where you don't need thick nor thin lines, you can use cheap brushes. I've worked with $1 brushes for years and made good watercolor paintings. But if you go into details or you want to make some expressive watercolor strokes with huge brushes, then I can definitely recommend getting professional watercolor brushes. After having finished the face portion with watercolors, I continued with painting the hair around the face. Here, I didn't want to paint every individual hair strand. I just wanted to make some beautiful watercolor effects and let the hair kind of dissolve into the background. And for that, I used a flat brush and alternated it with a wet brush so that the watercolor could bleed into wet areas while I also had some sharp lines and like thicker individual hair strands. I used silver watercolor for the abstractions because when it dries, it looks so beautiful when you tilt the painting in the light. And I also add some splatter effects on the painting because I really like how that looks. And then came the color pencils part already. So when I paint with color pencils on top of a watercolor base, it is extremely important that I start super light because in the first layer with color pencils, the texture of the paper is strongly visible. So I use small circular movements to apply an even layer of color pencil pigments, for example, at the eyeshadows. And then the trick is to add a couple of layers all on top of each other with different colors so that in the end you have almost flattened the paper and you have filled in all the tiny holes of the paper texture so that you can't really notice most of the grain anymore. And then to perfect it, I use my luminance pencils. Some of them are different skin tones that I use to smooth it all out. I mostly use light luminance pencils for the lighter areas. For darker areas, I don't really use luminance pencils. I just use my polychromos pencils and just use them over and over again until I have flattened the paper and I can't see the texture anymore. In the end, I added another layer of hair on top of the previous layer of abstractions just to give the painting another dimension. And I also added more splashes and then I was finished. I really like this little self-portrait. It already found a home. I'm super happy about that. And if you want to make a portrait like that, maybe you want to do a self-portrait too, or you want to paint someone else, I have just released a two hour and 20 minutes long step-by-step -step real time watercolor and color pencils tutorial about this painting where I guide you through the complete process from start to end. You also get to download my reference photo and in order to get access to the tutorial, just join me on Patreon at the $5 reward tier, which also grant you access to over 80 painting tutorials. And if you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and real-time lessons available for you on my Patreon site, in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos, you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. On top of that, all videos are downloadable and you can keep them forever. For just $5 a month, you get instant access to over 70 painting videos. That's pretty neat, right? And for only $10, you get access to another whole 
whole library of underrated but even longer real-time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them, then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. And for the extra portion of art, you might even fancy the art surprise tier. For only $5 more, I send you a beautiful set of three unique art gifts each month. I chose the best artworks and illustrations that I created and turned them into beautiful magnets, stickers and postcards, which are not only wonderful decorations for your home, but also are rare collectibles, because once I send them out, they won't be available anywhere else and I don't reprint them. So get your art surprises package this month. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash leobabrückner.